terrifying and deadly force. The aftermath, Takloban City's shattered landscape. This was home to thousands. It was not the wind that did it, it was a storm surge, reports of a five metre wall of water that engulfed the coastal strip and spread through the city. Even where the CNN crew was sheltering, about a kilometre from the shoreline, the surge was waist deep and powerful. All around us you hear the sounds of windows breaking, you hear the sounds of large objects falling and crashing to the floor. And uh, underfoot, it is now just a deluge. And if you look behind me, I don't know if you can see it, the uh, staircase behind me is now basically a waterfall. But that didn't compare with what happened here. The storm surge was the most destructive part of this typhoon. We're about 100 metres or so from the water here, and you can see the damage caused. These houses, these are all rough-built houses, completely flattened along the foreshore. Thousands of people live along a stretch of several kilometres, and you can see behind me just how bad it must have been. Authorities had pleaded with people to leave. Many did, but many stayed. This man was searching for his father, his brothers and his uncle somewhere, he thinks, under this rubble. We all tried to leave, but it was too late. I got separated when the water started rising. I don't know what happened to them, he tells me. The devastation across the entire city of 200,000 people is widespread. Winds upward of 250 kilometres an hour, leaving a trail of destruction. This is now a city on edge. No power, food and water running out, and medical supplies almost gone. St Paul's Hospital, we're told, is the only functioning medical facility in the city. They can't admit any more patients. There's no room, just first aid, in the most difficult of conditions. We hardly have anything left to help people with, the doctor tells me. We have to get supplies in immediately. Just a block away from the hospital, the increasingly desperate search for food and water leads to looting. This is one of the uh, few stores which is left open. And as you can see, the crowds have been forming around these stores, taking anything they can. Food is the priority at the moment, but uh, air conditioning units, plastic toys, everything is coming out of these stores. Another street away, people are climbing up a lamppost to get to the second floor of a department store to grab anything they can. It took a full day before help arrived. And even though the storm was predicted days in advance, the response so far has not been nearly enough. This was nature at its most frightening, a display of force that has smashed the lives of so many people. And this is just one city. There are countless towns up and down the coast where authorities are still waiting to hear word from. Andrew Stevens, CNN, Takloban City, Central Philippines. Grim and desperate situation on the ground there. And as Andrew hinted at the end of that story, that's a situation being repeated again and again along coastal areas throughout, especially the Bate province. Earlier today, the government of the Philippines issued a statement saying they believe that over 4 million people have been affected in the wake of this deadly storm. Now let's get more now on the belief effort.